Casting and welding subject code uh, 18ME35A. So, last uh, two class discussing about the introductions about the casting and uh, pattern analysis. So, today's session comes uh, today's session. So, discussing about the uh, different types of uh, sand mold preparations. So, first study of importance of molding process. Casting using sand molds. So the main thing is sand mold process, molding process. Main thing is the raw material is a base sand. So near about uh, 90 to 80 percent, either 90 to 80 to 90 percent, and some mixing of binders, additives, and waters. So these ingredients mixed in a base sand with uh, properly mixing with the help of uh, sand mixer or Muller and uh, required quantity of water is uh, added and mixed uh, two to three minutes properly. After once you can preparation of sand is completed, then you can use for preparing the mold box using the sand. Sand mixture is stored in the hoppers and conveyed to the molding section. Next, the following are the different types of molding process used in the foundries industries. First, it is a most commonly used green sand molding, dry sand molding, core sand molding, sweep sand molding, CO2 molding, cell molding, investment molding, plastic molding, and cement boarded molding. So, these are the important main important types of uh, to use the of the molding process using, using any one of them out of molding name. So next you can go for this figure it shows that this sand mixer or under it is called as a molar. So you can mix with the silica sand, base sand and additives, binders and so the required quantity of water. And to switch on the motor, the wheel is rotating inside the drum. The properly mixing of ingredients and then uh, used for to prepare the molding was it, it is called as a sand preparation method in foundry industries. So details the one by one, totally nine important types I have explained last uh, slide. So details the one by one, first one is a green sand molding process. So it is uh, most widely used process for uh, casting both uh, ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Any material, ferrous metal or non-ferrous metal. So nearly 60% of the total castings are produced from the green sand mold. Nowadays, almost all in the industry, more than 60% of the green sand molds are used to get the component. So since a suitable proportion of uh, silica sand, silica sand is used to, this is a base material, 85 to 92%. And pentone uh, it, it is a binder. So, 6 to 12 percent, minimum is 6 and maximum is 12 percent. Within that, you can use that. And water is 3 to 5 percent. And additives is 2 to 4 percent. So, put it in the molar or sand mixer and rotate and properly mixing these ingredients. Then you can use that preparation of the, sand, uh, preparation of the mold box. Or mix together to, proper, uh, to prepare the green sand mixture. So, parting sand also you can use that. The main purpose of using this parting sand. Uh, so, the main is uh, it is a dried silica sand. Parting sand means it is a dried silica sand. It is a it is a sprinkled on the pattern surface. Avoid to mixture sticking on the to the pattern. The main concept of the using the parting sand is uh, avoid sand mixture sticking to the pattern. It is a Dried silica sand, avoid and sand mixture sticking to the pattern. That's why you can use the potting sands. So you can see this figure clearly understand the preparation of the sand. So the first you can take this uh, drag box. 
so it is located in a ground level ground or table so inside this metallic box this one is a metallic box so inside that you can put it a pattern for example you can take this rectangular block rectangular block first you can build the sand this uh, surrounding of this pattern and ram it this is a put it to sand and ram it after that third step is you can invert this uh, drag box that pattern is coming at the top of surface area so next fourth step you can go for the cope you can use drag and cope there are two metallic boxes joining these two boxes the, this line it is called as a potting line the main concept of the cope box only provided the sprue runner sprue is provided and riser and vent hole is provided in this cope box after joining these two boxes cope and drag with the help of bolt and nut and next you can only the cope box only the sprue and runner there are two so next you can take this is a pattern you can remove that pattern after that we'll get the cavity inside this trap box this is a white portion it is called as a cavity and pick up the object as per drawing you can prepare the pattern you can put it here after ramming up the sand you can remove that pattern we'll get the cavity in the mold box suppose in the cavity core is required there is a hollow portion i already explained core so this is a hollow portion or cavity is required in this drawing then you can prepare the course as per the requirement as per the drawing it is called as a core you can put it here center only the white portion to put the liquid matter here after solidification we get the hollow or cavity in this component so these are the process carried out next you can go for the last final stage cope and drag you can join it the whole uh, boat and net so core is already pitted here so this is a vent hole 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is a sprue this one is a riser this one is a cavity so put it to the mortar metal in this uh, sprue cup then mortal metal flowing from sprue cup to the runner runner to the cavity okay so next you can metal is flowing through the riser up to point this point so you can study one by one drag is a metallic box at the bottom side cope is a under metallic box it is called as a cope box in between these boxes line center line it is called as a parting line so the function of the vent hole is provided what is the necessity for vent hole the liquid metal enormous gas will be present goes to the atmosphere at the time of uh, putting the cavity uh, the enormous gas goes to the atmosphere through the vent hole this is the main function that's why the vent hole is provided in this uh, cope box sprue only to molten metal flowing from sprue cup to the sprue sprue to the runner runner to the cavity it is a just like a pipeline and next function is a riser the main function of the riser is there are two important points the first one is uh, the cavity is completely filled or not ensure that once you can cavity is completely filled the metal is flowing here then metal is coming from up to this point that indicates that so the cavity is completely filled this is the main part second point at the time of solidification to shrink the motor metal very small quantity of amount metal will be shrink that so small quantity of metal is required to supply from riser to the cavity beginning of the pouring the motor metal into the cavity in 10 minutes you can uh, shrinkage taking place at that time the volume will be decreases shrink the motor metal then shrinkage allowance is very important just the riser it acts as a liquid reservoir storage tank or liquid storage tank so supply at the time of sinkage allowances the liquid metal is required for the cavity supply from riser to the cavity this is the main function of the riser the whole system you can complete this assembled once you can prepare that then taken from the motor metal from the furnace with the help of ladle or crucible ladle or crucible then you can put into here then you can metal is flowing from this point to cavity or at room temperature you can solidify taking place after that so you can open these two boxes cope and drag uh, then you can take the component cost part after that so unwanted material unwanted material means runner or so, so runner, sprue runner cutters and uh, vent hole 
this sorry event will be not this riser so these are the unwanted materials so these unwanted materials move from the cast component part so it is called as trimming operation trimming operation or knockout trimming operation after that only you can after you can trim also core also then this is the actual required point this rectangular block and center at that hole this is a required component for this one after that you can start plastering and start plastering you can send that after that machining after that inspection after that uh, then uh, painting is required painting packing dispatch this is a procedure for the steps involved in the boundary workshop using the grid sand mold preparation next we go for the second one sorry so for that you can study about the advantages of this one advantages of uh, lead ex uh, least expensive method there is no point it's not complicated expensive is less sand can be reused many times after reconditioning after reconditioning means again you can mix with that use that powders and water and put it to the cooler then you can prepare that sand then you can use that that is a many times you can reuse it and when you reconditioning clay and mixture uh, prepare for simple and small and medium size casting large and medium size casting it is not possible to prepare that in this process only that is a limited uh, up to 300 kg you can prepare small and medium size not bigger size large size it is not possible to do in this process suitable for mass production next you can uh, draw back for this uh, process uh, modes prepared by this process uh, lack in permeability strength and stability mold cannot to be stored for the appreciable length of time not suitable for large casting and definitely you can medium or only small casting you can produce that surface finish and dimensional accuracy of the casting is not satisfactory so these are the main drawbacks for the green sand molding process difficult to cast a thin and intricate Irregular shape. It is a complicated shape. Thin, very small, and a complicated shape. It is not possible to cast in this uh, process. It is not possible. Mold erosion is uh, common in green sand molds. Second one is a dry sand mold. Second one. So in dry sand mold, every, uh, so almost all the same concept of this one, mm, green sand mold. So dry sand molding is uh, prepared in the same manner. as that of the green sand molding except that molding is baked in a oven mold once you can prepare the mold works you can put it to the oven or furnace to remove the moisture content in the sand that is the major difference between the green sand molding and uh, green sand molding and dry sand molding same procedure first you can prepare the mold works you can uh, once you can prepare the mold works after that you can put it to the oven Then remove the moisture content present in that sand. You can remove that with the help of oven or furnace. Then uh, prepare the this one uh, dry sand mold. And the sand gets greater strength. You heated that uh, molding uh, mold box, so property will be increased. Then what are those means? Hence the uh, greater strength, stability, and uh, rigidity. this is also referred as a skin dried one other name it is called as a skin dried advantage of this process strength and stability of the dry sand is high as compared to this one because of uh, heating no the moisture content remove the sand so naturally strength and stability and uh, uh, of dry sand mode is high as compared to green sand mode compared to green sand mode breaking removes moisture and defect related to the moisture or elements moisture content reducing related moisture in drawbacks you can eliminate it dry sand molds are given better surface finish and the dimensionally tolerable better as compared to green sand mold that the uh, surface finish is good uh, good and dimensionally controlled within a tolerable limit dimensionally controlled drawbacks of this one consumption of more time naturally we have because of once you can prepare the mold box then you can put it to the furnace then heat it after it is cool then you can use that uh, Uh, pouring the molten metal in that box, so that's why con consumption of time will be more. Labor cost is also increase, and uh, during the baking process, hence uh, suitable for uh, it, hence not suitable for mass production because of time is required more, labor cost is also more. That's why not suitable for uh, mass production this process. 
not suitable for large and heavy size castings as they are difficult to bake. It is a large and heavy size, large and heavy size casting is not possible to do this system. High capital cost is for bake one under baked and uh, over baked molds are under taken. Course and molding core are prepared by mixing suitable proportion of silicas and binders and various resins or oils are used as a binder. The cores are prepared individually in the separate core boxes after which they are baked in oven developing greater strength. It can be used either for making a course or molds. And next one is a fourth one is a sweep molding. So we can see that uh, drag box, wooden board and spindle is there. The wooden board is rotating at 360 degree in the inside that. A thin wooden board having a counters of the casting is used as a pattern. The spindle is placed at the center of the mold and rotated so that wooden board sweeps in the mold box to generate the shape of the required casting in the side. Prepared only the producing the symmetrical and circle. It is very important. This type of process, molding process, is used for prepare the symmetrical. Symmetrical means you can see this. This side is same, left side and right side is also same replica of this one. Same symmetrical and circular casting saw. And the green sand molds, sand, uh, cement sand mold, CO2 and uh, loop sand mold can be used to prepare the mold. Next fifth one is a CO2 molding. We can see the same procedure for a green sand or dry sand mold. Green sand mold. But uh, one thing is you can remember here, CO2 gases passes after completion the work, completing completion of the preparation of the mold box. We can see so drag box, probe box, uh, vent hole, screw, run uh, riser, and with the help of board and net. And next you can start it. The CO2 carbon dioxide gas is after completing, preparing the mold box. Why it is uh, passes the CO2? What is the procedure for passing the CO2 gases in this uh, mold box? So the steps involved in the this one: suitable proportion silica sand binder and additives and mix and you can prepare the sand and the properties of the collapsibility of the sand. So in this process, sodium silicate is used as a binder. Sodium silicate and sodium silicate and active activates the uh, main, main, main activates strength to bind the sand particles in the uh, presence of carbon dioxide gas. For this reason, the process is commonly known as carbon dioxide process. Why it is carbon dioxide pass here in this process? Sodium silicate is used as a binder. But the sodium silicate activates or try or, or tend to bind the sand particles only in the presence of carbon dioxide gas. For this reason, the process is commonly known as a CO2 process. Sodium silicate reacts with the carbon dioxide gas for silica gel that binds the sand particles together. The chemical reaction is given higher. So, next one is cell molding. So, you can see that cell molding. This is a very simple mechanism, it is not complicated. So the cell molding is used for this one, preparation of the uh, Next is the investment molding. Investment molding also called as a precision casting or low wax process. Under name it is called as a low wax process or precision casting process or investment molding. The various steps involved in this process are die and pattern making first thing. The second one is a pre-coating wax pattern, investment, de-waxing, Reheating the mold and melting and pouring. So you can see this figure clearly understand. So first you can prepare the dye and you can prepare this one. So first step, second, third, and fourth. A wax pattern is prepared by injecting the liquid wax into the pre-fabricated dye, having the same geometry of the cavity of the desired cast part as shown in figure A. Second is several such patterns produced in the similar manner and then at attached to the wax gate and uh, screw by means of 
heating coils melted wax to form a tree as shown in the picture. This tree is uh, coated with the dipping into the refractory celery, which is a mixture of uh, finely grained silica or suspended in ethyl silicate solution. It is called a fiber. The coated tree is sprinkled with the silica and uh, allowed to dry as shown in the seed. The pre-coated tree is again by dipping in more of a viscous slurry made up of a refractory probe plus liquid dividers plus dusted with refractory sand. The process is dipping and dusting until a solid shell of a desired thickness is achieved. The tree is placed in a inverted position and heated in a oven about uh, 300 uh, Fahrenheit degree Fahrenheit. The wax melts and uh, drop down leaving a mold cavity that will be filled later by the molten metal as shown in figure D. So you can see this figure to understand. Uh, all 4 part of 5 parts completed then you can ready for to put a molten metal. After that you can get the final casting component 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the 4 components we get. It. The mold is heated about 100 to 1000 to 2000 Fahrenheit or 550 to 1100 degrees centigrade. Remove any residual of wax and the set time of hard on the binders. Next plaster molding is a flow diagram, same thing as a investment in some plaster. It is used for only plaster model. It is made up of Paris, plaster of Paris, or uh, they have some used in big holes. They are not used in the plaster. Plaster of Paris are also only non ferrous castings, especially aluminum oil can be cast. In this uh, using of the plaster molds or plaster of Paris molds or some molds uh, only for ferrous, uh, non ferrous metals, for example, for aluminum oil can be cast. So, uh, Good surface finish can be achieved. High temperature alloys cannot to be kept because of uh, aluminium 650 to 700 centigrade the boiling point to the melting point of this aluminium. But it is uh, less than 900 better to can use that. Uh, that is uh, that's why even non-ferrous metals are used. High temperature alloys cannot to be cast in the mold since the plaster of Paris uh, dehydrates and the molds uh, and the molds. Uh, there is a possibility of uh, sudden releases of water causing blow holes in the cast. That's the main products. Last one is a uh, cement bonded moldings. Ninth one. Cement bonded molds, hence a mixture of sand plus 8 to 12 percent of cement and 4 to 8 percent water due to prepare the mold. 8 to 10 port, port line cement. Uh, sand and air, the mixture of sand is 8 to 12 percent of cement and 4.8 percentage of uh, water is added and put it in the molar, then you can prepare the sand. Mold is prepared as in the natural process. Setting of the sand takes place due to the hydrolysis. The mold becomes hard and great strength. Additives are used in improve the collapsibility. Good accuracy casting can be produced. Small hairy castings can be produced. Drying of the mold may be required to convert dry molds. Sand molds is very poor.